Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining another webinar. So just as a reminder as to what this is and why we do it, this is a joint effort between uh, multiple IT companies around the entire country, uh, All Tech Services, Global Quest, Global Data Systems, and Data Magic. We provide continuous education every month, primarily around Microsoft 365 applications, but we also have some really cool cybersecurity ones, such as MDR, Rocket Cyber, uh, some print. If you're like, hey, that was a really good point, but I forgot it, no worries. You can always go back to our YouTube channel and watch it again. So super excited about today. This was one of the most requested webinars because uh, we did the Teams webinar with Kamal. It went great. And we have some power users that are like, hey, we want to go a little more advanced. So we moved into an advanced Teams webinar uh, with Kamal, who has done one for us in the past as well. I will go ahead and introduce Kamal. Kamal does a lot of our trainings. He has a lot of experience in managing enterprise Microsoft 365 solutions. He is an expert on so many of the applications and the ones that he is, we always get him in to, to talk. As uh, Taher said, I have a lot of experience in the Microsoft space. I've been doing this since Microsoft Teams was in preview. I've been doing trainings as well as implementing it for clients. So I have a lot of experience that in that space. However, Microsoft keeps bringing in newer and newer tools. So today I'm gonna to do a quick overview. These are some of the high level features I wanna talk about today. I know some of you may have already know some of these features, I've used them, but I'm gonna to try to dig a little bit deeper into them and how to use them, as well as some of the new features. Uh, so cool things, if you stick around, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to use Power Automate within Teams, as well as show you a quick chat GPT feature within Microsoft Teams as well. I know this has been a big thing, so that will be towards the end. So again, what's Microsoft Teams and, and why we wanna talk more about Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft, when they introduced it, they were like, okay, there are a lot of things going on. There's so many apps, the users have to go to too many applications and we're gonna centralize them in one place. So they have to collaborate and communicate part of it, which is what was Skype and Link and all the other ways that we used to communicate with each other, as well as email, you know, it's not, there's no email feature, but the chat part of it in a Teams channels, that kind of is trying to not replace email, but reduce emails. And there's the second part of it, which is the file sharing and collaboration. They have the file repository that they built on top of SharePoint, which they already have. So they, they put now in one application, two of their tools, but then they were like, wait, we can put a lot more into it. That's where all the other tools come in place in one place, which is Microsoft Teams. You can add the other Microsoft apps, which there are a ton of them. And then they also, allow you to add third-party apps that have been developed by someone like me or others, or you can create your own. You can even add some automation within Microsoft Teams. There's so much more than the typical few things that we always see in front of us. And that's what we're going to try to talk about today and so show you some of the those features. But we'll still talk about some of the file sharing capabilities and other features within Microsoft Teams. Look at this, this is built by a website, Jump2365. They built this periodic table of Microsoft 365. I always show this, but every time I go to grab it from their website, they add more and more things because Microsoft is adding more features. And at the time when I, 2018, 2016, when it was, a lot of these were still in preview and they only had the Teams, the Office applications, the Outlook section at the bottom left, but they keep adding and adding. And you can see how Microsoft Teams is in the middle, which is really good place to have it. It's connected to the majority of those apps. Not all of them, but the majority of them have something to do with Teams or Teams has something to do with them. You can access your Outlook application stuff, but not all of them. That's one example of like, you can access the calendar, the to-do items, the people, but not the email. But then if you look at the Office web, applications, you can access all of them. There's the whiteboard, the automation, the lists, the stream, OneDrive, SharePoint, all of that is accessible, even Yammer. There's on the right loop, which I'm gonna show you shortly, and the Viva now that they also introduced to Microsoft Teams. And now we get into the demo. Very simple, very straightforward. Demos are more challenging, so I appreciate your patience because I am actually going through step-by-step -step to show you things, so sometimes something could be slow and I have to move on quickly. And sometimes I 
stumble upon something that I remember that wasn't supposed to be part of the presentation, but it's a cool feature and advanced feature that I sometimes pause and be and tell you that this is something you need to pay attention to. I'm going to stop sharing this part of the my screen and get into the presentation. Again, usually if it's level 100, we would be showing you how to access Teams. By now, I would guess the majority of you know how to get to Teams. What I'm showing you is the desktop app, and the whole presentation will be using the desktop app. I might switch eventually to the web when I want to show you the Power Automate section. We're going to start with the actual Teams settings, because that is something we always miss. So you have probably been added to a Microsoft Teams, or you have been, you've created one. It's one of these two. That's how you're using Teams. I'm going to talk about the Teams section, not the chat. So that's where you create a join or create a team. And I'm going to look at the all hands meeting. This is a team that I already have, and I am the owner of that team. Now, if I click on the three dots, I can manage that team. And then this is where you can add team members. I have five different team members and guests. Right. So one thing I've noticed recently working with a lot of my clients or working with team members is that we get the teams get bigger and bigger. Like you just feel like there's some teams that have 200 plus team members. You end up not looking at it. You end up also not knowing who's who and how to work with some of the team members. But you'll notice there's a column that I have here called tags and that tag for some it's called leadership. These people are leaders in my organization, but how did I create that in my own team only? This is not something my organization gave to me. This is something I created. And what I used is tags. You can get to tags in two different ways. You can click on manage team like I did, manage team and then select the tags tab, or you can click on the three dots and there's manage tags as part of the three dot option. From here, you can click on create tag. I already have one, but I'm going to create another tag. And I'm going to call it core team. So this could be something like, I know, maybe a name of a team. You know, with Agile now, a lot of team members call their teams using Avengers names or months of the week or anything like that. They try to get unique names for their teams. I'm going to use core team for this example. And I'm going to add some team members, see who I have. I have Barry and I'm going to add Charlie into my team, into that tag. And I'm going to add myself as well. And I created this now. Now I have two different tags, core team and leadership. And these are assigned to me. If you don't include yourself in it or you're not included in a tag, it will show up under the other tags. Don't worry if someone or you deleted a tag, you can restore it from the deleted tags. Now, how can you really use this? And you might ask, what's the point of it? There's two main ways you can use this one is within the team or within the chat. So you can chat with those team members that are part of that tag, or you can tag them in your channel. So we have a lot of channels as well here. But one other thing that I've been finding really excessive nowadays is the notifications from like in the activity section, you'll get a lot of notifications because someone decided to go into a new conversation here and said, at budget team, and they tagged everybody on that team. Everyone that is part of all hands meeting is being notified. There's really tagging a channel will only reduce notifications if someone decided to unfollow a channel by basically hiding it or removing notifications by like channel notifications, turning it off. And people have to do it manually. If they don't manually do it, every time you're tagging a channel, everyone is getting tagged. But by creating those specified tags, what you can do now is say at core, and then you will be only tagging the core team, which is yourself, Barry, and Charlie. These are the members that I added to that team. And then you can add your message. Can you look into this? And then what you can add is an attachment or anything that is part of your team. Now, in this case, I'm just going to send it. And now the people that are tagged are only the three members of that specific tag. But you can also chat with them directly. You can get to that chat from here, anywhere you want, or you can go to the chat section, create a new chat, and type 
core team. This one will only be visible to you or anyone that is part of that team where this is created. Now, this one is created as part of the All Hands Meetings team. So only members of that team can see it. And then it will populate all the members of that core team. You have the option to remove any of those team members and have a smaller conversation. It's not restricted to that channel only. So this is one of the features that I like to start with. I think it's really underused and it's really cool uh, to use uh, as a leader of a team because you can organize your team that way. Now, maybe you're like, I don't, I never create teams. I don't care about this. Show me other features. So I'll show you some chat features that could be really useful. So in the chat here, you can always create a new, start a new chat by using the shortcut control N. I, I do that, but you can always click on the button. It's not a big difference. But there's one thing I've noticed in Teams, especially the desktop app, is when I use it, I could be managing a document. So I would go into Teams or I'm adding notes into OneNote or any of the other things that are not related to chat I would be doing. So I'm going to click on this word document and I'm editing it. I want to just edit it quickly here in Teams. But then suddenly someone will ping you or suddenly you remember that you need to send a chat message to someone. But the issue if you click on chat is that you're gonna get out of that page. And if you get out of the page, you need to either go back and it's gonna have to load again, or you have to find it again. It depends on how you do it. I know there are other options. You can always edit this in the desktop. Well, some users don't have the desktop. You can open it in the browser, but getting to the browser sometimes is such a hassle for a minimal thing that you're doing. So but you want to chat with that person, Charlie. Charlie's on your team. Charlie's editing this document with you. I use the search a lot. What I do is I use the shortcuts in the search. I might have talked about this in other training sessions, but I want to go over it again because I feel like it's a quick tip that you can help you be a lot more efficient at work. So use the at and then the name of the person that you want to chat with, in this case, Charlie, and say, Hey, Charlie, now I sent them a message right away. Did not need to get out of this. They might respond. I'll see the pop up and I can start the conversation with them. But if you want to continue it more than just one message, you can use the forward slash. The forward slash will give you a lot of options and a lot of settings that you can um, use. One of them that I like is the DND because sometimes I would be working and I start getting a lot of notifications. I just do forward slash DND and now my status swapped from available to do not disturb. Same thing, you can go back and change your status to available, away and so on. But one other thing you can do is the pop, forward slash pop space and then the name of the person, Charlie. And now that chat will pop out and you can talk to them. Yeah, I feel like the forward slash alone is such a powerful advanced feature. It's like easy coding. You're like, I just need to do these quick shortcuts to pop out someone's chat because I just need to chat with them. I don't want to have to go there and then exit that out so I can keep my, my teams good to go. That's that's really cool. Exactly. I like it. I use it all the time, especially when I'm all over teams. It's cool. Take a look at it. Just hit the forward slash and you'll learn about everything that they have in there. Yeah, so for anyone listening, if the only thing you get out of the webinar today is forward slash will make you more efficient in Teams. <laughs> like that one tip alone, if you're the individual at your organization using forward slash, people are going to be like, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Exactly. All right. We're going to keep moving. I'm going to go into now file management. So there are a few things that I like to talk about, mainly version history, but also I want to tell you that because Microsoft Teams is built on top of SharePoint, then you get all the SharePoint features. At the beginning, Microsoft introduced only a few of these buttons on top. You're talking years ago. The more they people request, I would say, features in Teams, the more they're able to add these buttons and new capabilities directly in Teams, they're adding it. But there's still more that you can get to by clicking on open in SharePoint. So if you click on that one, you'll get into the actual backend of the file repository. You can do more management of your website and of your SharePoint. But the main things that you need are now available in the Teams UI. Syncing 
is really helpful because you can get those documents to sync into your desktop. I normally switch sharing because now it's hard. I, I don't want to break the sharing, but I could show you how to do it. But you just simply click on the sync button and then all your files will sync. But what people don't know is that you can actually sync only a specific folder from any of the channels. You do not have to sync all of the general channel or you don't have to sync everything. You can go as deep as you want into a folder and sync. Now, if you want to sync the whole team uh, and make sure that those documents, when I say sync, for those that don't know, it would be available on your desktop from the file explorer to be accessed or uh, from, um, it, it will create a new folder with the name of your organization and then the name of the team site. So now you can just click on that sync button. But to get to all of the files, not just the channel, you need to go back one. So you click on files. And then from the files section, you need to go back one. You see, this is where it gets sometimes slow. I'm going to go back to the general channel because that one was working. Files. And then if you back, go back one path to documents, you'll see all the channels that are part of that teams that have folders and you can click on sync and it will sync all of them. But if you want a specific channel, like the general, you can go to a specific folders like event and only sync the events folder if that's what you work in. You don't have to sync everything. A lot of people think they need to do that and get all the documents to sync, but no. The other thing is add shortcut to OneDrive. If you do that, then it will automatically, you'll start seeing a link to that folder directly in your OneDrive. So if I go into my files and in your files on the left-hand side, you will see your OneDrive as well. My files is basically your OneDrive. You will see a link to that folder that I just, um, you see events. Now it's linked. You don't have to go outside your OneDrive to find it. And any updates and changes you make to that folder will automatically update on the channel and everyone that is part of your team will see it. So if I select and create a new, let's say Excel document, test, Create, that will show up now on my teams. And I'm going to go back to my teams. It appears pretty quickly as well. Events, test. Whether I edit it here or there, it's the same thing. Now, within the file that files that you create, I want to talk about additional features. The columns are really underused within uh, SharePoint. What you can do is not only view the, the name of the document and the file, when it was modified and who modified it, but if you click on add additional column, you can add specific fields, you can add links, you can add a lot more options because this table is like a SharePoint list. If you've ever sh used SharePoint lists, you can add additional columns, title them whatever you want and manage them as well. You can add that, you can use them for tags, a lot of Team members have seen they wanted to have their own numbering of documents and folders and archiving differently, so they use this. A yes or no option would be great to do something like, um, is this an, an older document active, archived? You can do a yes or no. You can add numbering if you want to title them based on a specific maybe ID or a client ID that you have. Uh, but you, you want to continue naming the document the way you name it, then you can do that. This also helps you sort the documents differently. A lot of teams, what they do is they, they add everything into the name of the document. You don't have to. The name of the document can still be a budget name, but you can add multiple line of text as a field, and you can say either as a column and name it whatever you want and say this, this could be details like document details and then you can put the name of the client and other things in and you can even do sorting once that is added so you could sort that. instead of by file name you could sort by client name if that was one of the categories that you, one of the columns you added exactly yeah you can you can do that so i'll add text and i'm going to name it client name Single line of text. I'm not going to change that one. Default value, you can say uh, an assigned no client or keep it blank, or you can add a client name. 
Um, there are more settings here that you can get to. Column validation. This is literally like SharePoint list. It is using SharePoint lists in the back end to manage those columns. And once you save it, that will pop up and you can edit in grid view if you want to quickly edit uh, those details. So I'm going to click on edit in grid view. And as you can see, now I can see the detail, the client name, and I can say client A, client B. The others are not for a client and I'm done. I'm going to exit and it's saved. And now I, I can sort Z to A and it's going to show me B first and then A second. So uh, it also is embedded into the search. So if you are searching in SharePoint, usually is better. I do not trust that top search sign. But if you click on open in SharePoint and uh, from there and search client B, that folder will pop up. I, I don't believe here if I do it. It's not going to uh, probably, yeah, because the, the search engine is a little bit different between the two. Uh, yeah. So now on top of all of that, another feature within document management that I like is version control. Version control is available from the SharePoint site. If you click on open in SharePoint where you can um, manage the version, uh, they also have added the a version control within the document itself. So you don't really have to open it in SharePoint, but from Microsoft Teams itself, you can manage the version. You just need to edit in Teams. And when I flip to show you the Power Automate, I'll show you some of the SharePoint and the back end stuff that we, other features that also impact Teams that you can uh, utilize. So I wanna talk about a, a few more third party apps as well as then show you some of the new features in Microsoft Teams. So the the apps section here on the left hand side will show you all the third party apps your Microsoft Teams. The main one that have been uh oh Kamal you're you're breaking up a little bit. Using myself and a lot of users utilize the most these are three i want to talk about today there's a lot more the tasks is really helpful because it will organize your per team tasks into one place so i recommend you add it from the app so you just search for tasks by planner that's the name of the app i already have added it and then i right clicked on it and i pinned it if you right click and pin it will always show up on the left hand side. Your organization may be organized specific tabs on the left hand side. You can press and hold and drag it up and down and move it to have more visibility to a specific tab or app here on the left hand side. You don't have to stick to what they give you, but I don't want to go against your organization and I get yelled out, but you can really manage this and move it however you want. Um, they, they've been adding a lot of organizations Viva, communities, and other things on the left-hand side or training uh, information, which is helpful, but sometimes it's not useful to you. So make sure you manage it the way, however you want. For example, calls to me actually is not a big one. I should really move it down because I don't use it as much. So tasks in here, as you can see, I see my personal tasks. These all come from to-do. To-do is one of the apps that are part of your Outlook now. Especially if you use Outlook on the web, it's one of the tabs that you see next to the calendar. That's to do. It's also part of Office 365, but you can use it in here. You can add your daily tasks, whatever you want to do. Get this pre present. present. I'm going to, I added this task. I can add more and I can add less. I can check mark it when it's done. I can add a due date. I can add the location. My task is where I want to put it. I'm going to give it a priority and keep it there. Add another task when I'm ready. Update the slides. These are personal. These are just my own. I'm going to add it to my own tasks. No one can see them, just me. But what you can also do is you can create team boards. The team boards, as you can see here on the left, I have a few of them. These are part of specific Microsoft Teams. Now, how do you create them? You can simply do it from the web, but you can also go to the Teams tab on the left-hand side. Now, navigate to any of your teams, select a channel, 
So I'm going to use the channel if I don't already have a planner there. And I'm going to click on the plus. And then usually it shows up right away in the tasks by planner. You can add it. Uh, just search for a planner if, you, if it doesn't show up. And it's right here. You can either select an existing plan that you have. So let's say your boss created one. They didn't know how to add it. One of your team members did. You can add it using an existing plan. Or if it's existing from a different channel, but you want to add it to this channel, for example, I have already a plan from the logistics channel. But a lot of my team members don't look at it because I'm part of the budget team. Then I'm going to add that existing plan into my team, and I'm going to notify my team. I hit save, and it will show up. Give it a second. It's still spinning. But any so, task I start adding from here will show up in my tasks by plan. Go ahead, Tom. I just want to take a moment. This is what Kamal has shown. It's so awesome. Any any of the applications that you're using on Microsoft 365, we've done training on all of them. There's almost always going to be a place within Teams to add that application right in Teams, like Kamal just did. He has the planner. He uses the planner. It's another application. But he wants that plan in this channel right here. And all he had to do was click that little plus sign and add it in. And then he can specify what he wants to add in. There are some organizations that get 80% of their daily work done within Teams. They open their SharePoint library there. Everyone can see those files. They open the other applications. They add in third-party applications as Kamal has already gone over. So I just want to make sure everyone listening really understands that important nuance within Teams. It's like if, if you have to go to another application to work on the thing, there's probably a way to get it right within this one dashboard because they all integrate so well together. Like I, we no, use that yeah. heavily. It, it's like Teams is where I get a lot of my work done. I even I even chat external companies. Like I'll, I'll chat clients, I'll chat vendors, right in my Teams, external chatting. You know, there's just so much as long as their organization allows it. So it's there's just, it's all here. It's, it's the ultimate dashboard. All right, come on back to you. That's great uh, call out. I spent the majority of my time here. I can get a lot done without having to leave uh, the application. There's, there's more. You might be surprised when you click on that plus sign, what kind of tabs you can add. There, there's a lot of third party apps. Now, of course, if your organization allows it, it's a big thing, but like Kahoot, like I used this thing 10 years ago in college. And they have it they, if you want to do some team activities. Kahoot's awesome. We use it at all tech for our, our quarterly meetings. It's it's a it's a game system, so you can have questions, multiple choice, and everyone gets funny names and, and gets points, and we give gift cards for the winners. So if you're not using Kahoot, uh, quick nugget, it's awesome uh, and inexpensive. And now I just found out that it integrates with Teams. There you go. So <laughs> sorry, thing. sorry for the Kahoot plug. I just love it. <laughs> Also, a lot of these things that we're talking about, there might be an alternative within the license that you have in Microsoft Suite. So I, I talked about Miro and Neuro. These are whiteboard tools. They're amazing. They're advanced. I've used both of them. I used to lose it Spark as well. But there's whiteboard. I mean, if you are okay with whiteboard with what they offer, which is a little bit more limited, that does exist as well. And that's the cool thing about Microsoft. It depends on what you want to accomplish within your team and you caught to test the features that they have before spending more money on something else. It may already exist. In this case, if you were someone was telling you on the team, I've used Miro before, it's amazing, we need to use it. Check out Whiteboard first. When it doesn't work out, go external. Tahir had to go through that recently. He used yeah. the webinars, did not work very well. That's when he explored external options, which is fine. I am, a lot of people say you're biased to Teams. I am. It's my job. That's how I make money. I need to talk about Microsoft Teams. But I'll be honest with you. There are things where you can go externally and find a better product. But there's so many things you can still get done within the suite and the license. Maximize what you paid for is the thing I tell all the users I work with. Maximize it. A quick tip on that. One, I think we're going to do a webinar on, on app alternatives. And one example is everyone loves Calendly, which is fine. But we use bookings, works better than Calendly, integrates with Microsoft 365, free. You know, it's there's so many applications like that within that ecosystem that integrates within Teams that all the things you're paying for, for those people listening right now, any of the applications you pay monthly for, 
you can look within the ecosystem, that whole application list that Kamal showed in the beginning and say, well, what alternatives am I already paying for? Because even the business standard license has almost all of them. And business premium, which we highly recommend to all of our customers, is it unlocks an insane amount of value. Another example, we have been using a third party antivirus for years, which is an amazing antivirus. But now that we're rolling more clients out on business premium, it comes with Defender for Business and we're evaluating it based on the efficacy versus the one we were using, which was WebRoot. And we're finding it to be just as good and it's included with the business premium license. And so there's just so many examples of, of that from a, a, a actual use case within businesses. What productivity apps am I using and how can I substitute that with Microsoft applications? Because you're paying you know, 15, 25, $45 a license a user. Yeah. But you're also paying 50 bucks for this application, 20 bucks for this application. That's true ROI when you start to integrate that all within Microsoft 365. So just more examples of, of what Kamal is talking about. That's great call out again, because there's another thing on these training sessions, we, we both try to be more high level. We try to show you the big picture of what you can do. There's another opportunity that if, you, if you're interested, what you could do is sit with us privately and just see what your team has, what you guys do on a daily basis. And we can just take a look at it. So like you can replace everything you're doing in here and modernize it using teams that way. Or actually you can't do that. What you're doing is the best way of, of doing this. This way you can maximize your license. And if, if that's another interest of, you know, personal training session for your team only, I've done that where I look into the, actually what they do, a team member, they, they would be using, they, they had licenses, um, Jira, and they weren't a software engineering team. They weren't using it for sprints. They were literally using it just like what I showed you here in this dashboard in the planner. They just put tasks and backlogs and they were paying the licenses for it. So they saved about 50 licenses by just using existing planner that they had. And that could be thousands a year for the organization. So that's where you could weigh in, spending some money on a on, you know, analyzing and reviewing what you have, because that way you're, we're not coming from the point of view that we're trying to sell you additional products. We're just trying to maximize what you already have. So that's also an option that you can take advantage of. Uh, and I'm sure you can talk to Tahir or someone one of your yep. uh, firms about it. And the application is usually simpler, which means actual adoption. Because there's so many applications that look amazing. You implement it users use 20% of it and you're paying a big money for it. Whereas if you get a simpler app, which is often what Microsoft 365 provides, it actually increases adoption, it increases the productivity. Now I will say exactly what Kamal said on any of the IT company that have invited you, there's a train my team tab on our website. So you can book a time with Kamal for specific applications. You can book a time with some of our other specialists right on that page and we coordinate everything for you. So. This isn't a plug because again, it's, it's, you know, to show, show some of these benefits. All right, go ahead. Come on. So. Yeah, I'll keep moving. I know we have 15 minutes. So tasks, once you add them, you'll, they'll start showing up here. You have the logistics plan, eat pizza. That's what I just added. I can see it here in the dashboard. And once you complete the task or you update it, uh, the activities tab will light up in red showing you that there's a notification someone updated one of the tasks that are assigned to you so it will keep you in the loop it's great you can also look at the schedule of what you have coming up i'm going to be eating pizza from the 11th to the 13th which is great can't wait but i see everything else in a calendar view as well so make sure that you're adding the start date and the end date it really becomes helpful i've used it recently in a project where we put all the tasks and we put a timeline and it just created the calendar view that the management wanted to see for when things will happen. I didn't even need to go into PowerPoint and build anything. I just took a screenshot and gave it to them. And I told them, here's the link. You can go and see our schedule live as we update it. And they were like, whoa, that's awesome. So that's one thing. Take advantage of it. Play around. It's awesome. Shifts. We talked about it before. Amazing tool. Some people think, and I say that every time, every time I present about shifts, they think it's for hourly employees, which is true. That's why it was initially built because they, Microsoft wanted to bring in more clients from the industry of restaurants and other places where 
they can license all their stuff, which could bring Microsoft a lot of money, which was smart. And they build them shifts so they can add the shifts, assign them, clock in, clock out. But I've actually used it with executives at a Fortune 20 company. They, during COVID, they wanted to know who's going to be in the office, who's going to be off PTO and so on. And we added all the team members into shift. So you can add it via group or via um, one of your team sites. And then all the team members will be part of it. So you can add the member to group, add people. So I'm going to add Charlie. And I can see Charlie's schedule now. I can add more. And then you can manage at the shift or at time off. It's as simple as that. You can swap shifts. You can say, I'm in the office this week. Who can be in the office as well? So it has a lot of cool features. We've done a presentation on this in the past. There are videos. You can watch it. But this is really awesome uh, added feature as well to Teams. Now, the next one I'm going to jump into quickly is approvals. Uh, approvals is very underused. This is really awesome way to get attention of someone that is now uh, you know, responding to you that you need their approval on something and you want it documented. But you can also, um, if you are the lead within your organization or you're an admin, you can add a template. You can add templates that team members within your organization can use to request time off, leave, or any sort of approval. There's Adobe Sign and DocuSign. I do not have accounts to show you, but I read about it. It works great. You can sign in with your Adobe Sign and see your documents and actually send them within Teams. You can send Adobe Sign documents for other teams, marketing, VPs to approve. But I'm going to show you the approval one, the basic one. You can simply just click on new approval request. Basic. You don't need to use the template if your team, if your organization doesn't have templates. Call it anything, anything you want. So, for example, budget approval request. So anything you want, then require response in the assigned order. So you can add multiple approvals. Approver number one is going to be Charlie because Charlie is just an analyst within the team. But then I want the CEO to approve, comes back to me. And then I'm going to give it a, an important priority at comments. This is to approve the $1,000 budget for client A. I can add attachment if I want. I'm not going to do that now. And that's it. And send it. Now, Charlie needs to approve first. Once Charlie approves, it will come to me. Once I approve it, this item is approved. The person that requested it will see that this has been fully approved. Now, I know this way I might. This, is this going to work or not? Yep, here you go. I already have another approval, sick day off, that was requested. I'm going to go ahead and approve this. And this has been approved. I do have some templates, one template that I created, it's just leave, but you can create templates and approvals out as well. The templates can be things related to vacation, leave. This is the approval template section. These are some of the example field trip, gift application, discount, item, business trip, reimbursement. You can use it however you want. For small organizations, Really, this is perfect. You don't need to use some of the power aut automations. Uh, you don't need to use some of the bigger tools to do approval. I would say this would be perfect also for smaller teams within large organizations. So I hope this helps now. I know 10 minutes, cutting short. This is approval. Some new features coming in. You have might use uh, polls in uh, meetings, but if I start a new meeting, oh, I don't know if this will be shown. But let's see, meet now, start meeting. Um, you can add polls. It's not going to show because I'm only presenting one thing, but this is one thing that you can take a look at. One other cool feature that has been introduced recently, I believe 90% of organizations do not have it enabled yet. It's not enabled by default, is loop. This is going to come in soon. It's really awesome. I tried it a few times. You can add a checklist with someone that is live updated and you can pin it. So I'm going to say trip checklist. And what you can do is add item one, bring charger, add food, bring food, whatever you want. You can do that. And then once you send it, it's live updated. And anyone between you and the other individual, you can check any of these items. 
you can add more people you can pin this to the conversation so it's always showing on top it's a pretty cool feature that is it's going to come to teams soon uh, your admin you can request it they can manage their policies and enable it for you specifically or for the whole organization it's still kind of in preview that's, now that's awesome how did you pull that up again sorry uh, it's in the chat uh, between the individuals or group chat. It's called Loop. Uh, okay. It's right here at the bottom next to it now. Wow. You I'm can add the table, that. you can add paragraphs, you can add voting. It's trying to simplify some of the live data. And then the last thing I want to show you, which I recently built because, you know, everyone's talking about chat GPT, but within Teams, you can also use Power Automate to automate some of the features and tasks. I have created... And this AI, the ChatGPT AI, I use it within Teams. I, I can send a message, as you can see. Can you send me a step-by-step -step guide on how to do something? This is even a formula. Like give me a formula to identify if this formula is an error. So it corrected it for me. You know, some cool stuff. I need an Excel formula that will get the last three characters of the first word in a cell. And it responded to me. So there's some cool stuff that you can also add. You can integrate it. I've been building apps within Teams for a while. And now I've been integrating some of those automations and AI. So if anyone is interested, you know, feel free to reach out and talk more about it. So how did you get to this AI channel? Do you just add a channel that you want to do? I added a channel and then I use Power Automate uh, where I use the API that is provided by ChatGPT to me. And I use the... API feature within the calling feature within Power Automate, and I connected it to Microsoft Teams, and I got here. Okay, so there's not like a ChatGPT interface, right? There's no, you have to build it. So, I know we're gonna get yeah. there probably pretty soon, but yeah, it seems like ChatGPT is still very API integration heavy. Yes, and okay. I believe when Microsoft brings in that Copilot officially and fully, that will be something that is a lot easier but for now that's the only way you can get some of those cool features and integrate them but this shows you also any application that has apis that you can pull from you can use power automate within microsoft teams to bring in all those into teams you can bring twitter if you want well x now you can bring twitter into your channel by simply using the APIs to pull all the data from Twitter. You might have to pay for it now if you go over 600 tweets, but you can bring it into your channel. Or you can say, Power Automate, what I want you to do is go through Twitter, and if you see my company mentioned anywhere, bring it into here. But again, this is level 300 and more of Power Automate thing that you can do, not necessarily within Teams. So that's why I didn't go into details. But I've done it for one client that wanted to know if they're ever mentioned in on Twitter. So we used SharePoint, and a database. It was a smaller company, so not a lot of mentions. And anytime it was mentioned, the, the whole tweet and all the replies get saved in a database. Yeah, Power Automate's a whole nother subject. Yeah, right, right now we're working Power Automate for employee onboarding and offboarding. So when a submission comes in, we're starting to work through this. It's pretty cool. It automatically signs the license, get the person set up. So when they log in using Intune, their computer is set up. It's kind of like blowing our mind. It took a lot to set up. It is pretty complicated. But for businesses that have somebody that can really dive in or they want to hire a consultant for Power Automate, like the stuff you can do for automation is insane. Like Zapier is great. Power Automate seems to be like the next level. Any questions we uh, want to cover? I'm not seeing any other questions. Awesome. Elena's going to start using Tasks by Planner. It's awesome. We have a training on the YouTube if you all want to check it out. Just search Global Quest or Alltech or Global Data Systems or Data Magic, whoever invited you. And all of the past trainings are on here. We also have a webinar page on everybody's websites. So you can go and check out the upcoming webinars if you want to make recommendations webinars you want to attend we love hosting these we always find a specialist like kamal to really explain it well i mean we know it but it's also good to have somebody that this is their primary thing to be discussing it so anyway if you have any suggestions please let us know we're happy to continue to host these all right jared asks is there any way to integrate tasks by planner with outlook to create tasks as emails come in uh, yes, it's uh, there's a little bit more work that needs to be done. Again, this is where we get back to Power Automate. If you go to Power Automate, there's a template that says create tasks from emails. 
and it's it's already there you just have to plug in the information and it will allow you every time an email comes in with a specific title or from a specific sender you can say if it's sent from xyz at gmail.com then create the task in this planner and in this bucket it's uh once you do it once it's pretty straightforward but you can customize it that well that way i've done it at, at a large scale actually where organizations were doing approval through planner as well where they a task would move from one bucket to another using power automate as things come in through email but you can simplify it if, if you're just trying to say an email comes in create a task then that should be pretty straightforward using the template that they have in power automate awesome yeah and the webinar list located Luis, uh, Mike just showed the one for Global Quest. For anyone that invited you, if you just go to the university tab, there's all of our past tech tips, trainings, all their past tech tips, trainings, and all upcoming webinars. We have most of 2023 scheduled out. We're working on 2024 now. So again, open any suggestions. Really appreciate everybody being on. If you want additional training, check out the webinar page. There's a train my team tab. Of course, you can just reach out to the IT company that invited you. So we just really appreciate everyone joining today. Obviously, you're interested in improving your business and continuous improvement. So good job. Props to you. Kamal, thanks again, man. You did great. I learned a lot today. I always get a lot out of these. So I really appreciate it. Thank you all who joined. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, appreciate everybody. It. Appreciate y'all. And uh, Kamal, thanks again. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take it easy. Take care.